Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In a world filled with economic uncertainties, staying informed about the global financial landscape is crucial for making informed decisions. Lynette Tsang, a seasoned financial expert, has been dissecting and analyzing complex economic matters to offer her insights to the public. In this detailed video analysis, we will explore Lynette Tsang's key points on topics ranging from currency fluctuations to central bank digital currencies, CBDCs and the importance of wealth preservation. The video begins by addressing a rumor about the BRICS nations considering backing a new currency with gold. Lanad Zhang points out that the source of this information was an offhand comment from a Russian embassy in Africa, which the BRICS bank and its members deny. She highlights the challenges of trusting any currency, citing the example of Zimbabwe's attempt to back its currency with gold. The main question raised is whether backing a currency with gold could fix the issue of unpayable debt. Zhang emphasizes that for this to work, the currency must be convertible, allowing holders to exchange it for gold. She challenges the credibility of such moves, given the track record of government's misleading information. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. I mean, I know that you're probably referring to that Russian leak about them announcing that they're going to back the new BRICS currency with gold, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, when I dug into that, that came from an embassy in, it was it was kind of like an offhand, offhand comment from a Russian embassy in Africa. Um, and everybody at the BRICS and the BRICS bank particularly is denying it. So they could announce a surprise backing, but here's the thing that I have that makes me challenge. A any currency, not just the BRICS, but any currency just coming out and like Zimbabwe is doing right now. So I'm paying a lot of attention to what's happening in Zimbabwe. In order to, once they back a currency with gold, then it fixes all of this unpayable debt where it is. Can they magically just say, okay, here, we're going to back this with gold. First of all, it's got to be convertible. If I can't take that CBDC and walk out with an ounce of gold or whatever in the gold, then how do you know it's even there? It's just really, you're going to trust the same people that have already lied to you and lied to you and lied to you. Okay. So, um, and, you know, and second of all, if they did, then certainly they would become the world reserve currency because there would actually be something of value. But all they're really talking about is allowing member states to buy goods and services from the other country with their local currency. Bypassing the US dollar. Correct. Absolutely. What's it more worrying, and I'm gonna be talking about this, so I don't wanna get into it too much now, but what's more worrying is the design of the universal CBDC and any CBDC, because the goal is to hold all of your wealth in one area. That makes it so much easier to control, right? And also easier to deny, because right now, even with all of the computer bandwidth, somehow they can't seem to connect your savings account and your brokerage account, unless of course you're at Bank of America in the country where you got Merrill Lynch is, is, was absorbed during the financial crisis yeah. in Bank of America. But even then, it doesn't seem like they can right now connect those two ends. Once we go into a CBDC, all of that, your savings, your equity in your house, any, any fiat money um, accounts that you have, loans that you have, everything would be under one in one place. So yeah, it's convenient for you, you're shopping and we are taught just in time, right? Gotta yeah. have it now. In, yeah. in my day, we had to save up and then buy it, but today you want it now. Well, I got all my equity, I got money on my phone, even though it's the equity of my house, how easy is it to spend that? So even forget the tap, it's the phone, which everybody holds, right? So, you know, the World Economic Forum, you will own nothing and be happy. And be happy. Moving on, the discussion shifts to CBDCs. Zhang raises concerns about the design of universal CBDCs and the goal of consolidating wealth and assets into one easily controllable entity. She points out that this centralized approach 
would make it easier for governments and institutions to manage and potentially restrict individuals' financial activities. The fear of losing control over personal wealth and assets looms large in this context. Wynad Zhang delves into the concept of wealth preservation as a countermeasure against the potential loss of purchasing power due to fiat currency devaluation. She advocates for holding assets like gold and silver, which tend to maintain their value as fiat currencies decline. Zhang explains how a rising gold price indicates a weakening currency, and she suggests that individuals should consider converting some of their gold holdings into income-producing assets. This strategy, she argues, helps protect against the risk of outliving one's savings, especially in an era of extended lifespans and uncertain government support. I'm not sure you'll be so happy because wealth never disappears, it just transfers location. So somebody is going to own everything and that means you're renting and you're not going to get to dictate the price. They are. So why not be where the wealth transfers and that's what being your own central banker is about? Oh. Food? Water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. Because these are all the things that you need to sustain a reasonable standard of living. Now, in the wealth preservation, if you have gold, part of that is to preserve the wealth that you have to hold in fiat money, where you choose to hold in fiat money assets, because they're all going to zero. Right, all this fiat money, whether it's the Aussie dollar, the US dollar, the Japanese yen, etc., they have been on a relentless track down to zero in terms of purchasing power. So gold maintains that. Right now, you have gold and silver severely undervalued because, again, a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency. Yep. But you have all those other assets that are severely overvalued. That's going to flip flop. Oh, wow. And when that flip flops, then you have your purchasing power so you are in the right place at the right time with the right asset and you can convert some of your gold into these income producing assets that dare i say it you can't outlive yeah when i first became a stockbroker nobody ever talked about you outliving the money that you save for retirement because on government bonds, you were getting like eight, 10%. So if you had a million dollars in the in treasuries, you were generating roughly 80 to 100,000 a year, which back then was a lot of money. Yeah. Today it's not, but then that was, I mean, you were really, really wealthy. I, I don't even know, because I think I was out of it by then, where they started saying, well, you have enough money till you're 92, or you have enough money till you're 87. So what do you do if you live past that? You're gonna die? No, you well, rely on the government handouts. Oh, yeah, that puts you in a great position. Yeah. Um, so, but with this strategy, I mean, it's just a repeat of history. That's all it is. It happens every over 4,800 times. It happens every single time. I, I've even done studies on what happens to these income producing assets during the transition that we are already in. So you just get into position. You hold your purchasing power intact. You have something to barter with. And yep. then when we see that cup formation, again, it's, it's all about patterns. You see this cup formation that tells you that the smart money that understands what's going on is accumulating. That's an accumulation pattern. It's not rocket science. It's actually really, it's actually really simple. But when you see that the smart money is accumulating, that's when you accumulate. The conversation takes a turn towards the erosion of open debate and media influence. Zhang cites examples of government pressure on social media platforms to suppress certain narratives or viewpoints. She discusses the systematic nature of these efforts, expressing concern about the loss of democratic principles built on open discourse. Zhang draws attention to the influence these actions have on the flow of information and the extent to which powerful entities can shape public opinion. Wynad Zhang encourages viewers to think critically and remain vigilant in the face of information manipulation and control. She emphasizes the need for individuals to take charge of their financial well-being by diversifying their assets, focusing on tangible stores of value, and participating in wealth preservation strategies. Zhang reminds us that wealth transfer is inevitable, and those who understand the changing landscape can position themselves to be on the right side of this transfer. Most of the posts detailed in Dougherty's opinion did not violate platform policies. Nevertheless, the White House succeeded in getting the companies to downgrade, label, or remove them entirely. 
So, you know, who do you have ruling us right now? We do know how strong all of those media platforms are and they're getting more powerful. The overall picture is one in which the government seeks to establish an official position on an issue of public importance and then through pressure on social media companies makes it difficult for those who differ, disagree to find an audience. We all saw that happening, didn't we? So this isn't something that you can go, well, that, that didn't happen. We saw it in real time happening. I know people that it happened to many. What makes this case different and even scary is the systematic nature of what the White House has been doing from the micromanagement of which posts should come down to demanding regular reports on compliance. I mean, really, what do you think about that? Read this suit, read it, do yourself a favor because democracy thrives on open debate. Do we have open debate anymore? No, we do not. We do not have it. And I know because I had to do it myself and it killed me, but I need to be here for you. So absolutely make sure that you read this suit. But ask yourself, how great was the pressure on these media companies? Sufficiently great that a Facebook executive responded to, by, to one official by assuring them that the company wanted to know how to get back into the White House's good graces. We're keen to amplify any messaging you want us to project. I mean, as my grandson would say, because it's so obvious, but there are more of us than there are of them and we are all in this together. Now, some of the examples that they used were only a few examples of the efforts by the platforms to please officialdom. You want me to show you another way that they please officialdom? Ta-da! They're lobbying spending just in 2022. And there are all of the players that control the internet. What do you think, you guys? Do you think that they might be having an impact on what information actually gets through to you? Do you see these things are hiding in plain sight? I have no more access to information than you do. The difference is, is that I'll dig and dig and dig until I find it. And thank goodness I was a banker and I was a stockbroker. So I understand this language and what they're saying. But make no mistake, the, these, these guys that are also kowtowing to the government, because why? Why would they do that? Maybe because it's the White House that makes the rules. And they want the rules for their benefit, not for yours, not for mine, for their benefit. Do you trust any of these players? No. In gold and silver, I trust. In gold and silver, we trust because we are all in this together. And it is critically important that you see how and that you are being led to move forward in a way that benefits them first. But the reality is, is that people are starting to notice. I get how frustrating it's been. I've been doing this for a long time. I get how frustrating it is, but rest assured, people are starting to notice.